Krista Jacobson, Headmistress of the Buddha Dukai. Today we're going to look at video lesson number five of this Ban Chukai video series. As many of you guys know, the Ban Chukai was written in 1676 by Fujibayashi Yasutake and it's known as the Bible of Ninjutsu. In this particular video lesson today, we're going to be looking at Ongyojutsu, specifically Uzurogakure. Now there are three reasons that the ninja would use Ongyojutsu, and that would be for infiltration, for evasion, or for assassination. Now, Azuragakure means quail hiding. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the words of Fujibayashi Yasutake when he talks about the technique Azuragakure found in Ongyojutsu. Azuragakure hiding is to get close to anything and draw in the arms and legs, pull on the head, crouch with your face down, and with a serene mind, as though you are listening to frost fall on a cold night, chant the spell of Ongyo hiding in your mouth. Be sure not to turn your face towards the enemy. There are five advantages in crouching with your face down, and five disadvantages when crouching with your face up. Now when it says, um, Azura Gokure hiding is to get close to anything and draw on the arms and legs, pull in the head, crouch with the face down, and with a serene mind, as though you are listening to frost on a cold night, chant the spell of Ongyo hiding in your mouth. Now, for me personally, studying ninjutsu for as long as I have, the magic aspect, all the magic, all the ritual, and all those things that you see in ninjutsu and ninpo, that is extremely fascinating to me. That's something that um, I study a lot, and it's something that I definitely add into my personal life as well, um, to, a certain, to a certain regard. As many of you guys know, I practice Wicca, and in my personal life, as far as religion, I'm a pagan and I practice Wicca. So anytime I see different cultures, um, and they practice some form of magic or some form of um, spells and ritual and things like that. I find that very intriguing and very interesting. And um, with a lot of these things you see in a lot of the historical ninja texts, you see lots of spells, you see ninja magic. Uh, in fact, I wrote an article on Facebook. You guys should check that out also. I wrote an article on ninja magic. Anyway, when Fujibayashi talks about the um, chanting the spell of Angyo hiding in your mouth, what he's basically saying is, one, there is a magic side to it. There is um, a force, if you will, a, ma a magical force that can be used to help you hide, to help you be invisible. Um, and he goes on to talk about that specific chant, that particular spell. However, there's also a physical part to this that I think is important that you guys have to realize. When, you, when, when you're focused on only the perception of your eyes, you tend to see fear, you get anxiety, and those kind of things, which is something Fujibayashi talks about as well with Angyo Jutsu, that that's why you should lower your face, because your eyes can deceive you, you can feel anxiety, and that might make you want to run away before you need to run away, or before you need to evade. So, um, the, the idea of having um, this sense of magic, um, or this sense of um, outward power to help you hide or become invisible, those kind of things I personally find extremely interesting and uh, things that I do a lot of personal research and study on my own. However, physically, when, when, you, when, you, when you take your head down away from the environment and you start making chants in your head, it does tend to um, make your body more calm, especially if you have a belief in it. Because if you lower your head and you're full of anxiety and you're saying a chant inside your head and you're like, you know, you start saying the chant, saying the chant, your body tends to get tense and you start to, you know, do this kind of thing. And when you do that, you become seen. But if you believe the magic, or if you believe the ritual, if you believe the spell, and you lower your head, and you calmly, inside your head, that's what he means inside your mouth, you're saying it in your head. You calmly say this chant, you're saying this, it keeps your body relaxed because you have faith, you have belief in the spell. You have um, faith that the magic, or the ritual, or the practice of this outward force of energy will help you become invisible, will help you hide. And in doing that, it does make you more relaxed, and when you're more relaxed, you tend to believe blend in and connect to the elements and the surroundings around you. Uh, for you guys who are interested in the particular spell, um, uh, the Ongyo hiding spell or the chant that you would say, it's uh, On Anichi Marishi Esawaka. On Anichi Marishi Esawaka. That's, uh, that's the particular chant that they would say inside their head to keep their body calm, to keep their body relaxed, to blend into the elements that had at that time a specific uh, magical power. Uh, that would help them uh, become invisible if they did uh, the technique of Azuragakure correctly. Again, this is written in 1676 by Fujibayashi Yasutake in the Ban Senchukai, also known as the Bible of Ninjutsu. 
I know all of my students, supporters, and critics realize that we've been doing Bon Sin Chukai techniques for many years. It's been in many of our videos that we posted online as demonstrations. It's also been in lots of articles that I've written online on various different social media platforms. It's also been in many books that I've written and released, particularly this book here, Tomoru Shinobijutsu Shoden Namaki. If you guys would like to see an article that I wrote on um, Azura Gakure, or quail hiding, that I posted on Facebook back in 2011, then the link will be below. I'll just put Facebook link, Azura Gakure. You guys can read a small little article that I wrote about that. The reason I'm stating this particular link is because I want you guys to be aware of when I actually uploaded the pictures and wrote that article. When you upload something on uh, social media, it always gives a date of upload. And I uploaded that particular technique back in 2011. And again, the reason I'm stating this is because I want people to realize that these articles and techniques were done years before this book was ever written, translated, and released. As many of you guys know, we do a stealth camp every year, um, and it's one of our major events, and it's one of those events that we have open to the public. What that means is you don't have to be a Buderu student to attend the camp. And um, if you guys go back and watch the video promo of the 2011 uh, Shinobi no Mono uh, stealth camp, you guys will see that Azura Gakure was one of the techniques that we taught at that particular camp. If you guys would like to watch uh, that particular video promo that we posted back in 2011, here's the link right here. Please follow the link and you guys can go watch the whole video promo that we posted back in 2011 and you guys can see lots of historical ninjutsu that we demonstrated in that particular video. If you don't want to click this link right here and take you over to watch the 2011 uh, Shinobi no Mona Stealth Camp that we posted back in 2011, you only want to see the technique of Azura Gakure found in the Bon Sin Chukai, then uh, stay tuned and I will show you that technique right now. So there's one of the variations of Azura Gakure that we practiced in the 2011 Shinobi no Mono Stealth Camp. Like I said, please follow the link and you guys can go there, not only watch the video and see lots of historical ninjutsu that we practiced that year, but you can also see the date of upload and you can see that we uploaded that video years before any of these translations were released. Again, the only reason I'm making this known is I want people to know that we've been doing historical ninjutsu for many years. So thank you guys very much for all of your love and support. I do appreciate it. Um, until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.